We're going to continue with the question started in previous videos, which is Cambridge, June 2016, paper 3-2, question 2. We are going to now look at C, D and E of this question. Question C asks you to explain why a business might create a provision for unrealized profit. Remember that although factoring in a manufacturing profit helps the management to determine how profitable the factory action actually is, it is problematic in that this profit has not yet been realized on the finished goods inventory on hand at the end of the period. In other words, if you haven't yet sold it, you haven't actually made a profit yet. And so you need to rather show it at the cost to you rather than what it might have cost if you had bought it from somewhere else. When preparing the financial statements, they should reflect the actual state of affairs rather than a profit that has not yet been made. So you need to show your inventory of finished goods in the statement of financial position at the cost to you. In other words, the value that you might have and then subtract any provision for unrealized profit um, that you might have provided for. Your statement of income will also need to be adjusted as the gross profit on manufacturing would be overstated. Over time, as you create a provision one year to the next, the provision will only need to be adjusted by the difference in your stock at the beginning and your stock at the end, because in future years you would have had an opening stock that would already have been adjusted. We'll look at that when we look at question D. So your answer is shown over here. Although there are many more answers given than what are required, looking at all of them will help you to understand better. And obviously, the more you write, the more chance you have of getting some marks correct. You only need to have three of the points that are indicated here to get the marks that you need. The finished goods at the year end are valued at cost plus the profit margin. Remember that we have so far valued our goods, including the profit margin, because we took that into account in our manufacturing statement. But because I've said to you that's not realistic, we therefore, point number two, need to take into account that unrealized profit should not be anticipated. And therefore, the profit element should be removed from the inventory by creating a provision for unrealized profit. That is an ideal answer. You can also go the route of quoting that it's IAS number two that tells you that this is what you need to do. In other words, you are using the lower of cost and net realizable value. In other words, your cost is what it cost you, and although you would be able to sell it for a higher price, which is your net realizable value, you need to use the lower of these two amounts, and that is why you have to record it at what it cost you, not what you have since valued it at. And lastly, you could speak about prudence, not overstating your profits or assets. Um, in other words, I would actually be inclined to refer rather to the IFRS concept of fair presentation, that it needs to be as realistic as possible while being conservative. So there's your answer for number C. Have a look at D. D asks you to analyze the effect on the budgeted profit for the month of October 2015 due to the changes in the provision for unrealized profit. For this question, you need to read it quite carefully. It's not asking you about changes over the past year, but rather it's looking ahead to the month of October that has not yet occurred. It is very important to read your question carefully in order to be able to answer it carefully. What I would suggest you do over here is before we go on to work it on the whiteboard, I want you to use your highlighter. And I want you firstly to go up and have a look at the top of the question, which told you that you're going to value this at cost plus 15%. I want you to highlight that part of it, that it's cost plus 15% over here. Then I want you to go to the additional information which has been given to us at the bottom. And it tells us that the budgeted closing inventory value of finished goods was 18400 at the end of October. Note, budgeted, as asked in the question. Highlight 
that 18,400 Rand, so that when I refer to it later, you will see exactly where it comes from. I also want you to go to your answers that you prepared for A and B, and I want you to highlight in B in your statement of income, your closing inventory of finished goods was 21505. I want you to highlight that. That would have been in your statement of financial position, but I'm pulling it from here because it's what you have at, on hand. It would also have been shown um, in the information that was given up at the top. So if you prefer, you could go to the information at the top and highlight it over here. Finished goods at transfer price on the 30th of September, the 21505. That is what is important. So now that you know where the information is coming from, let's go and work through what you need to do step by step. In order to determine the changes in the provision for unrealized profit, which is what we will need to see will affect the budgeted profit for October, we need to consider what would the provision account be at 30th of September, which is now, and then what would the provision be according to the budget on the 31st of October, in other words, in one month's time. In order to do that, the easiest thing is to draw up a T-account for provision for an um, realized profit over here. And in order to get my balances at each point, I'm going to show you the calculations. Hopefully, as you get confident, you will be able to do the calculations in your head very easily. The first thing is to work out what my provision would have been at the end of the current financial year. We know that the stock on hand was valued at 21505. But keep in mind that that is a value that includes the markup. So it includes my 15% manufacturing profit. To get from there to the amount of the manufacturing profit, um, which is what I would have had to have as a provision, I would need to times it by 15 over 115. Let me explain that to you. Firstly, what I've done is I've said divide by 115, in other words, 100% plus the 15% markup that was added on to get to the actual cost of the stock without the markup. Then times it by the 15% markup that would have been added on. If I use that calculation, I will then end up with an answer of 2805, which is the amount of the profit that is held in that account. I would then need to subtract it from here, um, and I would show it in my statement of financial position at a lower amount than this. In other words, 18,700 is what would be in my statement of financial position. And this difference of 2805 is the provision that will go in over here. So that is the provision that I would have created for this financial year. If we have a look at the budgeted provision, the additional information that is given to you just above the question D tells you that the budgeted inventory is 18,400. So you will start with 18,400 for your calculation and you do exactly the same thing again. You say times 15 over 115. Out of interest, this is the same kind of calculation as if you're trying to work out the VAT on an inclusive amount. Um, in that case, you would just use your VAT rate. So if your VAT is 14% as it is in South Africa, you would say times 14 over 114 to get from an inclusive price to the VAT amount. It's exactly the same concepts that you are using here mathematically. So we take what we budgeted for, divide it by the 115 to get my base cost, and then times 15% to get the markup. And then from there, I can see that I should have a provision of 2,400 at the end of October. Now it's quite simple. 
I look at this T account and I can see, well, if I need it to be from 2805 to become 2400, what do I need to do to make that work? Quite simply, I'm just going to work out the difference between these two, and therefore I'm going to have to subtract 405 over here. And that is how I get the change in my income. Wonderful way for helping you to see how you need to adjust accounts. In this case, you can easily see that your provision for um, unrealized profit had to be changed by 405. So that's where that number comes from. How do we know that it is an income that increases profit? Well, there are two ways to do it. One is by looking at the T account itself and realizing that if you have to debit the provision account with 405, you would have to credit another account. And if you are crediting account, an account, it would have to increase equity. In other words, it is increasing your profits or it is an income. The other way of understanding it is realizing that if your provision is getting smaller because your stock that you've got is getting smaller, it means that your adjustment um, is actually a positive one rather than a negative one. So it's up to you how you figure that out, but do make sure that you do right there that it increases the profit. If you only had to show 405, even though you had to do a lot of work to get there, you can see you'd only get one mark instead of two. Let's have a look at the last thing that they want to ask you. More additional information is given, so read it very carefully. The price at which the product could be bought from an outside supplier is expected to increase. It is now proposed to transfer finished goods at production cost plus 20%. So where we were using 15%, it's now suggested that we change it to 20%. The question is, advise the directors whether or not the markup should be increased and justify your answer. Now, you need to specify whether you think this is a good or a bad idea. And if you have a look at the suggested solutions, interestingly, you can see that you could actually go either way, and we'll discuss both of the options. However, I would argue that this first option of yes increase is certainly the better way to go. And you can see that there are more reasons for it. Um, but the nice thing is that if you justify your answer, you could still get marks even if you argued the other way, as long as you backed it up correctly. It is very important that you always back up your answer correctly. So you can see you get one mark for your valid advice or decision either way, but you have to back it up. And then you will get one mark per valid point up to a maximum of four to give you a total of five. So if you had to just give a whole lot of valid points and not come to a decision, you could get full marks, but you wouldn't be able to get full marks because you haven't come to a decision. Always remember to answer exactly as what is required. Now, at the moment you're using 15% and they are proposing changing to 20%. The reason here is quite important. They're expecting that what they have to pay from the outside supplier is going to be more. Um, obviously, this is assuming that any other supply would also increase and there wouldn't be another cheaper option. It's not just one supplier that's changing. We'd make the assumption that all the suppliers' prices are changing, probably because there may be changes in labor costs or something like that that has increased the manufacturing cost. So, um, you could argue that the company manufactures because it can produce goods cheaper than buying them for resale and this markup will then increase your cost of sales and therefore reduce your gross profit. It's added back in the income statement, leaving your net profit unchanged. Um, you, so that is just an explanatory introduction to what we are doing and why we are doing it. And you can put any of those points in. Um, as long as it's, again, backing up the argument that you make. Um, in other words, that you want your uh, markup that you use to be realistic. To me, that's really what it comes down to. Since the bought-in price has risen, the transfer price accordingly should rise too. Um, and this is coming back to that, let's be as realistic as possible. Remember, if for a fair presentation. So the proposal to increase the mark sh markup should be adopted. This one over here is your mark for making a decision. Increasing the markup may lead to staff gaining higher bonuses and therefore improving morale and possibly productivity and profit. 
these are all suggestions of what could actually happen. Um, you don't really have anything to say that that is the case, but you would be credited with marks there for thinking ahead a little bit and predicting what might happen that is realistic. Please do make sure that you, you do make suggestions that are possible. On the other hand, you could argue that actually it might not change because um, it's going to increase my overall cost of manufacture, which might affect my selling price. Um, hopefully one would realize that either your selling price would have to increase anyway if you were buying from a supplier, um, or you could say you're going to keep your selling price lower because you're able to do it lower, then that's fair enough because your selling price would make your goods uncompetitive if it increased too much. Um, which would result in lower sales and a lower profit. So you could go this route if you wanted to. Um, you can even have a little bit from both, as long as make sure that whatever you say, you do come to some kind of valid decision or advice. I do hope that you've understood this a little bit better. And remember, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to post them or to email me directly for any assistance. Thank you.